The Rufon Edge Welder is unlike any other in the industry. It has the unique ability to provide consistent machine finished welds in areas where only hand welding could be used to weld the membrane, such as skylights, the base of parapet walls, and even on curved accessories. This makes the Roof on Edge the ideal solution for both smaller roofing contractors whose profits are consumed by man hours and can't justify the cost of a full-size automatic overlap welder and large companies who need another option to streamline their hand welding efforts to increase productivity and profitability. BAK's Roof on Edge is the perfect tool for small to moderate sized projects with its lightweight design of only 53 pounds. It is the perfect tool for jobs 20 to 70 square in size with membrane thickness from 40 to 60 mil. The heat source on the Roof on Edge is the same as BAK's full sized Laron welder allowing it to operate at speeds of five to seven feet per minute, making it the fastest small welder with the largest heat source on the market today. The Roof on Edge requires a 240 volt power supply to operate. A voltmeter can be used to ensure the outlet is delivering proper voltage. If using a generator, the minimum size required is 10,000 watts. It is also required that only GFCI protected 10 gauge three wire line cord no longer than 100 feet be used. The roof on edge must have a plug wired to the power cable when first set up. It is extremely important to properly wire the plug to ensure full power operation and proper temperatures. When wiring the plug, make sure the yellow wire with the green stripe is properly attached to the ground terminal on the plug. This one is indicated by the green screw. Next, make sure the brown and blue wires are connected directly across from each other. This is especially important for four-prong plugs as the roof on edge may not get full power if it is wired improperly. While working on the roof, items such as hard hats, gloves, safety glasses, and closed-toed shoes are often required. Check all local safety regulations to ensure proper attire is worn on the roof. The controls for the roof on edge are located conveniently to the rear of the machine. To turn on the machine, toggle the green power switch to the on position to allow cool air to start circulating through the heat gun. The black airflow knob to the left of the power switch should be set to full power for TPO and PVC. The temperature is set by dialing the red knob on the back of the heat gun to the desired temperature, similar to the handheld unit. To heat the element, just press the black toggle switch located next to the red temperature knob on the back of the heat gun. It should take about three to five minutes for your roof on edge to rise to full temperature. The design of the roof on edge is unique in that the pressure wheel sets about eight inches away from the body of the back of the machine, allowing the nozzle to slide to the outside of the body. This unique design allows you to now weld within one inch of your skylights or parapet walls. When ready to weld, line up the rubber pressure wheel on the front right of the machine flush to the edge of the overlapping layer and the guide wheel at the back of the machine to run against the outside edge of the overlap layer. This will allow the machine to move in a straight line along the seam. Then disengage the caster wheels by pulling the handle in towards the machine. The welding nozzle should be slightly angled down into the seam. The edge of the nozzle should stick out about 1 16th inch from the edge of the material. The distance of the nozzle from the pressure wheel should measure about 1 and 1 quarter to 1 and 5 eighth inches from the center of the pressure wheel. You always want to make sure your single ply material is clean and dry as wet membrane will not weld. The weld should start about 8 inches from the end of the seam. To start the welding process, just slide the nozzle into the seam. Once fully inserted, the machine will automatically start welding. Be sure to watch the alignment of the guide wheel and the pressure wheel to stay on the edge of the seam. If you need to adjust the alignment, gently add pressure to the handle to the left or right to correct the alignment. Never lift the welder to adjust as you will lose the pressure on the weld causing potential void or failure. End the weld about 12 inches from the end of the seam. Grab the heat source, slide it out of the seam and tilt it back into the resting position. Be sure to let the welds cool before checking the seams with a seam probe to prevent damaging the weld. When welding TPO, if you see a black line form along the welded edge, stop and either turn up the speed or turn down the heat until you get a weld that does not produce a black line. When welding PVC, you want to see a black bleed out along your welds. 
The only way to ensure proper temperature and speed is to run test welds in the morning before beginning and after lunchtime when the daily temperature is hotter. To test the weld, cut a sample crosswise over the weld, about 10 inches long and 1 inch thick. Tear the top and bottom ends completely apart to reveal the scrim of the membrane. The scrim area should measure between 1 to 1 and a half inches in width to confirm a successful weld. The narrower drive wheel on the roof on edge can be adjusted to weld on curves for special roofing accessories by pulling the wheel away from the body of the welder until you hear a click. Because of its unique pressure wheel design, the roof on edge can weld in even tighter circumferences than the regular roof on welder, making it very beneficial on certain single ply roofing accessories that currently require hand welding. To return to the straight linear welding path, Simply press in toward the machine while turning the wheel until you hear two clicks. The wheel will then be locked into a straight line welding position. What is really nice about the roof on edge is that the machine can cool down without disturbing the settings. Just switch the heat gun power switch to off to allow cool air to circulate for about three to five minutes through the heating element and nozzle. Once blowing cool air, turn the green power switch off and leave all the settings intact. Always cool down a welder before turning it off. It will save the heating element and promote a safe work environment as a properly cooled down machine will not cause any dangerous burns to the crew. Once turned off, always store the welder with the nozzle down in the welding position for safety and protection from damage. It is important to follow each of these critical steps when operating the welder in order to maximize efficiency of your welds and to maintain safe operation procedures on the roof.